Hello. Welcome to Container Image Scanning, brought to you by SANS Cloud Security. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm a principal security engineer with Puma Security and a senior instructor with the SANS Institute, where I contribute and instruct SEC 540, DevOps and Cloud Security Automation, SEC 510, Public Cloud Security in AWS, Azure, and GCP, and SEC 549, Enterprise Cloud Security. Feel free to leave comments or reach out to me on LinkedIn or Twitter at the end of this session if you have questions. With that, let's jump in and take a look at our short agenda for this discussion. The first thing I want you to understand is the container security lifecycle. It's a very long workflow with lots of opportunities for security teams to get involved with. One of those stages is scanning container images for vulnerabilities. Once we explain how that works, we'll jump into Azure's Container Workload Protection Capability, which is inside of Microsoft Defender for Cloud, and then you should have a pretty good understanding of how this technology works. The first thing we should take a look at when we're looking at the container security workflow is NIST SP800-190. This is a pretty long guide that will walk you through using different security tools and practices from the very beginning of a container workflow, which starts with on the developer desktop, writing Docker files and building images, all the way through storing those images in a registry and then running them in some sort of orchestrator in production with a runtime security tool enabled. This is a great resource if the container space is relatively new to you and you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide on where to get started when it comes to hardening the workflow. Summarizing NIST SP800-190 is in this diagram. The big difference between traditional operations and now our container security workflow is that we have users making configuration and operations level decisions very early on in the life cycle during the pre-commit stage. Our engineers are choosing which base images they're going to inherit from in the very first line usually of a Docker file, which can impact the runtime and production. We can then take a look at when that Docker file hits version control and potentially an automated continuous integration and delivery pipeline, what security steps we can include there to ensure the compliance of the production environment for this container image. There's also some opportunities for continuous security being done inside of the container registry, as well as inside of the orchestrator itself, which is responsible for running these images in production. One of the key pieces that can be included in almost every single one of those phases is image vulnerability scanning, which is the topic for this video. Image vulnerability scanning occurs when we take a container image and we're going to scan it, similar to how we might scan a more traditional operating system for vulnerabilities. There are some pretty big differences in the way that this technology works. The first part is understanding that a container image is really just a big compressed tar GZ file. You can go rename that extension of a container image and unpack it, decompress that, and what you'll see is a bunch of directories with a bunch of data or JSON files describing what's inside of each of the layers that makes up this image. From that information, you can build what we would call a software bill of materials or an SBOM. And that SBOM contains each library that's in the image, as well as the version of that library, which we can turn around and compare to vulnerability data sets. We'll take that library that we find in your image, check the data set and say, is there a known bad version of log4j in this image? And it would return a yes or a no along with the CVSS score and some of the other metadata related to that particular CVE. This process 
is a very simple way to run what I would call more traditional vulnerability scans against your containerized environments. The cool part about this is there's multiple ways that we can run this tool. From an open source perspective, what I like to have our engineers do when they're writing their Docker files and they're building and they're testing images locally is to take a lightweight open source scanning tool, maybe something like Trivi, and then run Trivi from their desktop or their laptop and generate a compliance scan just to see if there's something very egregious that would show up in those scan results telling the engineers, maybe I need to go upgrade a base image or some library I'm installing inside of the Docker file before I actually commit this to version control. Of course, there's other open source tools available. I've also used CoreOS Claire at points in time, as well as Encore, although Encore is really kind of turning into one of those enterprise level tools that we'll look at here in a second. Regardless of the tool you select, the idea here is to go in and identify vulnerable libraries in the image before they make it to that orchestrator running in production. Commercially, there's a number of commercial tools that have been upgraded or created, depending on the vendor, to focus on image scanning as well. If you look at this list, we see Nessus and Black Ducker on here, which both have been around for quite a while. Nessa started out really as our vulnerability scanner. We're actually scanning the network and looking for services and vulnerabilities kind of from the outside in. And they have upgraded their systems to be able to peel apart those layers inside of the image and give you vulnerability data based on the image manifest. Black Duck similarly was a vendor that did not originally focus on image scanning they originally focused on software composition analysis, which is more an application level tool where it would pick apart, pick apart a Java or a .NET application, for example, look at the package.json file or a POM XML file, and then show you all the vulnerabilities from packages that your applications were inheriting from NPM or Maven or NuGet or wherever the package repo we're pulling from is. Black Duck has been upgraded to also scan container images. And then we've got some vendors that created tooling specifically for container security. Sneak is one of the more popular solutions for scanning container images. And we'll take a look at a way to run Sneak against the container image here in a few minutes. We've already mentioned Encore Enterprise, but there's other great offerings here from Aqua Security, Trend Micro, Palos Prisma Cloud, Sysdig, and then of course, we've got our major cloud vendors, AWS, Azure's Microsoft Defender, and Google Cloud's Container Registry Scanner for performing this in your environment. The short story is there's almost too many options to pick from Find one that works best for your environment, run with it, start identifying vulnerabilities, and start iterating and fixing some of those results. Let's take a quick look at a couple of examples here before we jump into our demo inside of Azure. For your developers that are looking to just run a very quick sanity check before they commit a Docker file and or an image, to a repository, you can very simply run Docker scan like you see on the slide here on line one. Notice I'm giving it a file, so that'll run static analysis against the Docker file, as well as the image in the local registry or local Docker repository that I want to scan, which in this case is DM tools slash base, and we're looking at the insecure tag on that image. If you take a look at the results between lines three and six, you'll notice something interesting. It did find a vulnerability in the curl library, which is normal for the image that I'm scanning. But the info on line five, notice that's pointing to the snick.io domain. Now, what is going on here is that Docker and Sneak, or Snick, depends on how you pronounce it. I've heard both. Will They partnered together in order to build an easy scan command into the Docker CLI. 
The data set and the tooling underneath the Docker scan is using our friend Sneak under the hood in order to run these local scans. So if you run this command a lot, you may end up having to go register on sneak.io for an account. And if you scan a lot, you might have to actually go pay for a actual license to run these. So it just depends on how often you're going to use this, but this is a great way to get in and start running scans early on in the development workflow against your container images. Trivi, which I mentioned earlier, is another great tool. This one is from Aqua Security. Now you can certainly run this locally, just like we did with Docker Scan. The context that I like to run Trivi in is actually inside of a continuous integration or a CD continuous delivery pipeline because it supports automation very well. If you take a look at the command I'm showing you on the slide here on line one, I'm running Trivi image, which says, let's scan an image. And I'm scanning again that DM tool slash base insecure image. The big difference here, and this is a very cool feature from Trivi, is the ignore unfixed switch that I'm passing on the command line. This tells Trivi to only report vulnerabilities that we can actually fix. If you think about the world of vulnerable libraries, a lot of vulnerabilities have not actually been remediated, meaning there's no version that we can change to that's going to fix the vulnerability. And what I'm saying here is in an automated pipeline like this, only show me the vulnerabilities that I can actually do something about minimizing the noise and trying to make this digestible as our DevOps teams are quickly trying to push workloads through into a production environment. You'll notice the output in the slide is showing you kind of the tabular format, but we do have digestible machine formats such as JSON, which can be parsed by your custom scripts, as well as Serif, which is a Microsoft schema for reporting on static analysis, dynamic analysis, and just general vulnerabilities identified by tools. That schema is what's used by GitHub's security tab under the hood to display security findings to you. If you're interested in container security or if this is new to you, there's a number of great resources out there. I would highly recommend reading Liz Rice's container security book. Once you go through that, Carol Valencia has a great container security checklist out there on GitHub. And you can also read through the CIS benchmark for Docker and Kubernetes if you're going to be using those runtimes in production to host your workloads. With that, let's switch over to a virtual machine where I have enabled Azure's Defender for Cloud container workload protection capability. So as we switch over to a virtual machine here, let me go ahead and undo the screen saver. And you should be seeing the Azure web UI. Now, what I have done prior to this is I have enabled, and this is Terraform configuration for turning on the container scanning solution inside of an Azure subscription where we're coming in and saying, hey, on the Defender for Cloud, which used to be called Security Center, I'm creating a standard tier container subscription. What that does is it will pick up all of my container registries as well as my Kubernetes clusters, and it will start running automated scans against those and reporting them on the Defender for Cloud dashboard. After deploying that change out to my subscription, I can come into a container registry, which is this DM infra and then a random identifier. If we open up this resource and we take a look at the repositories that are inside of this ACR resource, you'll notice I've got two. One's called DM API and the other one's DM web, which is for an API and a web tier. And if we open those up, what we'll notice is that I've got a couple of different images tagged with a build ID. In this case, it's 66 and 68 sitting inside of this registry. When I enabled the Defender for Cloud's workload protection feature for containers, 
what it did is it actually scanned these images for me. So if I go to the Microsoft Defender for Cloud section of this registry, I'm going to find a couple of recommendations in here. One of them is container registry images should have vulnerability findings resolved. Let's go ahead and open that up and we'll take a look at a couple of the findings to get you a feel for the type of data that we'll see here. If we take a look, you'll notice right out of the gate, if I look at the high risk issue called security policy, it's already yelling at me saying Alpine Linux, Linux up to 3.9 is obsolete. This is a very old base image that I'm inheriting from. And it's telling me, Eric, it's probably time to go upgrade that thing to the latest version. That's one type of finding that you'll see. If I jump off to page eight, we'll see that we've also got a vulnerable library. So I've got a libx11 inter integer overflow vulnerability inside of this container, which is of course a CVE, it looks like a CVSS3 base score, and I've got a link out to a CVE, and it's telling me you should probably upgrade that library to address that vulnerability. Another cool feature, if I go back to the first page here, that's just coming into play with Defender for Cloud's container workload protection feature is this SCA concept. The cool part about this, this usually is something we'd have to bring in an additional tool for, something like Black Duck or maybe something like uh, Sneak also does this. But what this is doing is it's actually scanning the application that's running in this container. It's scanning the jar files and looking for CVEs there as well. What you're seeing is that I have downloaded a Maven library, Faster XML, the Jackson Data Bind Library. And it's telling me, Eric, there is a vulnerability in this library. It's high. And here's the link out to the CVE, which means I probably need to also go back and talk to the development team about upgrading that version of that package inside of their palm.xml file. These are the sorts of findings that you're going to get from a container image scanning solution to help identify vulnerabilities inside of your images. With that, I'd like to thank you for listening to this session. We've got lots of other great material here inside of the SANS cloud security curriculum. Make sure to go out to sans.org slash cloud security to find the different courses and the different certifications that you can sign up for. Thank you for listening, and we'll catch you on a future session.